Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Thank you so much for joining me on my second Patreon video. I do appreciate all the support. So today's video is going to be how to make this very pretty, pretty collar. Um, it is an adjustable dog collar. The weave is called Helmi's Indiana and I could be most likely pronouncing that incorrectly, so I will have it on the screen for you guys. So join me in making this really pretty collar. For the supplies that we'll need today, you will need some kind of jig. I have here the Speedy Jig Pro. I think it's a great tool. I also have the Speedy Jig XL, which is also another awesome tool. But if you are someone that you think you're only going to make maybe one or two projects using a jig, then I would suggest making a homemade one. It is a little bit cheaper. You get a board about 15 to 20 feet, well, sorry, 15 to 20 inches long. And then you're going to want to put two nails at the top in the middle of the board, two nails at the bottom in the middle of the board. You want those nails to be kind of close together. You can use that as the tongues that you have on a jig. You can also get a tape measure and glue that down for measurements. I do suggest having a backup tape measure so when you have it all hooked up you can measure it one more time to make sure that your measurements are correct. I used a homemade jig for a very long time until um, I thought it was okay for me to invest in something else. There are other jigs out there, but I can only speak for the ones that I have used. I've used the Speedy Jig, and I've used the Jig, which is a very large jig that hooks up to your desk, which is an awesome tool, but I think that's more for people that do this kind of uh, hobby a lot more often. So again, this jig right here is the Speedy Jig Pro. You're also going to need an adapter. Now I have a light blue Biothene 3 fourths of an inch adapter here. It's 6 inches long. I make most of my adapters the same length because it just makes it easier. I can make a bunch of them at one time and then use them as I go along making collars. If you're not familiar with how to make an adapter or familiar with an adapter at all, I do have a video that I can refer you to where I show you guys how you can make your own and where to get your supplies from. Now if you would like to use leather instead of the Biothene, you can definitely use my same instructions. I like Biothene better than leather. Don't get me wrong, leather looks great on a dog, it really does. But Biothene is waterproof cleans so easily. I use have white for my dogs and it the dirt just comes off with soap and water. Um, it comes in a variety of colors which is great when you're making multiple projects and it's super durable. It's really strong. When measuring out your adapter what you're going to want to do is measure out from the very top of the square ring to the bottom of the bottom square ring. You're going to want to measure that out. You are also going to have it buckled in the first hole and you can push it down on your adapter when you're measuring it because it does kind of poof up a little bit so you'll get that flatter measurement. You can also do it from the other side if you wish, but you do have to press down on everything again. And for the cords that we're gonna be using, I'm gonna start with explaining the double cow hitch cord and then we'll move on to the other cords. So for the double cow hitch cord, I have right here 550 peri cord in midnight blue. The way you're gonna measure for this cord is 
that you want to measure your dog's neck with a tape measure. Don't measure your dog's collar that it's using now. You will not get the proper measurements. You want to use a tape measure and measure around your dog's neck. Once you get that number, for me today, mine is 14. So my collar that I'm going to be making is going to be 14 inches. For working with Pericord, making a collar, a bracelet, a belt, things like that, for every seven inches of that measurement that you got, which mine was 14, you're going to add an you're gonna inch to that total number that you got measuring your dog's neck. So for me, mine is 14. I'm going to add two inches to that. So now I want it to be 16. The reason for that, and this is an important thing to do, because the reason for that is when you make your, your collar, your collar is going to be quite thick. Pericord weaving is pretty thick, when you, especially when you're working with 550 cord. And the circumference of your collar, the middle part, will be smaller than the outer side. And your outer side is the measurement of your dog's neck that you you have so if you if I made my collar at 14 inches that's going to be the outer side of the collar the inside of the collar is going to be too small and that's just because it's just a thick collar so you want to add seven in, sorry you want to add one inch per seven inches of your dog's collar. Now, if your dog's collar is at 16, so you have the two inches that you have to add, and then I would add a quarter of an inch after those two inches are added, just to compensate that little bit that is going past the 14 mark. Now, if you have a dog's neck that is, say, 18 inches, I would do two and a half inches over. If you have a dog that has a 19 inch neck, I would go a little bit past two and a half. So what I'm trying to explain is that even though you don't fall each time on seven inches it might be a little bit higher or yeah a little bit higher you still have to add in that extra so the um, dog collar will fit correctly and I will have some more information on that down below to try and help you with that So for my collar, like I said, it's 14 inches that I measured out with a tape measure and I have to add two to that because of the one inch per seven inches and now I'm at 16. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to subtract my adapter. My adapters are six inches. If you are like me or you are thinking about maybe opening up a little shop or something for yourself, what I find really handy and easier for me is to keep my adapters all at the same size. Now if a customer asks me for a larger adapter, I will do my best to accommodate them, but I try to keep my adapters all at six inches because it's just less confusing for me when I go to and do another project. I know automatically that my adapter is six inches and I don't have to measure it out again or anything like that. So I do try to keep them all the same. I usually make these. I'll get one night where, where I just work on adapters for the whole night and I make a bunch of them and I, I just make them all the same. It's just a lot easier that way. But 
like I said, if a customer does ask me for something larger, then I do try to accommodate them the best I can. So I'm going to take the overall total of my dog's neck size, which is 16 now, subtract the 6, come up with 10, and that is the pericord part of my dog's collar. It's going to be 10 inches long. There's a rule of thumb when it comes to pericording and working with cord is they say for every inch of your project you want a foot of cord. Now when you are weaving the middle part of your collar is not going to take as much cord as the outer part of your collar. And I know a lot of people don't like to waste cord. I completely understand that. There are projects that you can do with that cord that you have left over. You can make zipper pulls, you can make keychains. Um, I made some Christmas ornaments last year where I got those plastic balls. Um, that you can fill and I actually just gutted the cord cut it up into small pieces color coordinated some of them put those pieces in the balls and then um, had uh, family members names put on them and I gave, I actually gave them out for some of them for Christmas gifts so there are projects that you can do with that cord every collar is weaved differently and then you also have that some people pull tighter than others so they'll have extra more extra than others so I'm going to give you a rough estimate on how to how you can uh, measure out for your projects but the rough estimate that I'm giving you is actually something that I will be using in the video so we have 10 inches of pericord part of the collar that I'm going to be making. So the rule of thumb is a foot for every inch. So that's 10 feet. Because this is the cord that I'm doing the double cow's hitch with, I'm going to be adding a foot and a half onto that 10 so I'm going to have 11 and a half feet. And I'm doing that because for some reason in my brain, I'm afraid that I'm going to run out of cord. And I do not like, I really don't like it when I run out of cord because I do not fuse my ends together. I will take the whole thing apart and start over again. Um, you can fuse your, your ends to make them longer, but I really don't like doing that. So yeah, I end up taking it all apart. So I'm going to be adding a foot and a half and I can guarantee that I'm going to have some left over, but I know that I will definitely have enough with that number. So whatever your number comes out to be, I would add a foot and a half to whatever your, your cord comes out to be. For the other cords that we're going to be using on this project, we are going to be using another Midnight Blue. We're also going to be using Polar Blue. As well as Sparkling Silver and Charcoal Gray. These cords are all 550 Pericord. The way we want to measure these particular cords out is for the Polar Blue and the Midnight Blue. You want to use the rule of thumb for every inch of your project, your pericord part of your collar, you want to add a foot of cord. So I'm going to have 10 inches on my collar. I'm going to have 10 feet of cord. But then you're going to subtract two feet of cord. The middle part of the collar takes less cord than the outer side or the 
double cow's hitch cord. So you want to just subtract two feet from your overall total. So for me, that would make it eight. Because I started out with 10 feet, minus the two becomes eight. And I'm going to measure out eight feet of cord for these two cords. For the sparkling silver and the charcoal gray, we're going to be measuring or yeah, measuring out these a little bit differently. I only want half of what I measured out for the polar blue and the midnight blue. So I have eight feet. I only want half of that for each color because we are going to fuse the sparkling silver and the charcoal gray together and make it one long piece. So you only need half for each color. So that's going to be four feet. Again, you're going to need to measure out your polar blue and your midnight blue with the rule of thumb of one inch or one foot per one inch of cord. So I have 10 feet. That's going to make 10 feet of cord that I need. And then I'm going to subtract the two feet. And it doesn't matter how large your project is, subtract that two feet because you're going to have it extra if you don't. And that is quite a bit of extra cord. Um, and then for the silver or the sparkling silver and the charcoal gray, you just want to cut that number in half. So you want to take that eight, cut it in half. It becomes four. And you just want four feet of cord for the sparkling silver and then four feet of cord for the charcoal gray and then we'll fuse them together and it'll be one long piece which will be eight feet. I'm also going to be using some micro cord and what I did for the micro cord is I have 30 inches here. I took that 10 inches of my collar that is going to be pericord and I times that by three and I got 30 inches so that's what I have for the micro cord and then we have our beads I got these beads at Joann's um, fabric store they got a really decent hole in them so I can string the micro cord without using a needle and we will be using these today these are 8 mm and they're in silver and they they are plastic so I'm going to change my micro cord I have decided to go with some black micro cord instead of the white I think the white is going to show more than I wanted to against the other cords that I've chosen for this project. So I'm going to go with black and I'm going with the same length, 30 inches of black micro cord instead of the white. To start this project off, you're going to take your adapter if it's buckled and you're going to unbuckle it so it's the two pieces. And then we're going to attach our double cows hitches to the adapter and then put it on the jig. So after you've gotten these two apart, what you're going to want to do is you want to find the middle of the cord for that you're using for your double cows hitch. So the quickest way I know how to do it is you take the both the ends and you pinch it with your other hand and you just pull this through and as you go through you'll get to the end when you get to the end this should be the middle of your cord if you want to double check it go ahead it doesn't hurt once you're here you're going to take this right cord that's on the right and you're going to go down an inch or about an inch 
Then you're going to work with the part of the adapter that has the holes for the tongue or the buckle. Take your loop and then take your end of your adapter with the holes in it. You're going to take your loop and you're going to go from front to back through the square ring. So go from front to back through the square ring. Put that loop through. You can tug on the middle of that loop. Take your end of your adapter and stick it through that loop. And then pull this loop down. And once you have it by your fingers, you're going to pull on these two ends Tighten it up and there's your first cow's hitch. Next you're going to take your cord that is on the right, you're going to pull it towards the right and then you can make a loop. You're going to go from front to back again through that square ring. And as you're putting it through, you are creating a, another loop here. Take your other hand as you're holding your cord and just put your finger in there, in that, inside that loop or through that loop. You have this one on the back that you just put through. You're just gonna pull on this all the way through until you get that end through. Take your finger out of this loop you can pull down on it a little bit, make it a little bit larger. Take your cord on the right, go from back to front through that loop. So you can pull it out again, make another loop, push that through from front, sorry, from back to front, pull that all the way through and then tight. Take your cord on the right again, pull it out, make a loop. You can put your finger right next to your knot. You're going to take this loop and you're going to go through this square ring, but you're going to go from back to front through that square ring. So back to front, you're going all the way to the right with it, pull it through. Take where your finger is and take it out. You have another loop. Take your right cord, take it out, make a loop, push it down that loop that you just took your finger out of, pull it through and then pull it tight. And there you go, you got your two cow's hitches. Now we'll go to the other side. So we're gonna just flip this around. Make sure that your cords are not crisscrossed in any way. Also make sure that your collar, so your um, adapter is facing up. Take the cord on the right, you can just let that fall. Take the one on the left now, and you're gonna have it go up and then out towards the left. And you're gonna make a loop. So you have the cord that is attached to the double cow's hitch on the bottom, on the right, and then on the left, you have, I call it a loose end, and that's on the left, because you made your loop. Now we're gonna do what we did in the beginning with the other side. You're gonna take your other adapter, or your other side of the adapter, and you're gonna go through the square ring. Be careful, you do have your D-ring attached here. You don't want to go through the D-ring, just the square ring. The D-ring is for your dog's tags and um, their leash. So you're going to go through from front to back through that 
uh, square ring. This in the back, you can make it a little bit larger and you're gonna take your adapter and you're gonna just, it's a little harder to bend right here because of all the screws, but you're just gonna go through that loop. So you might have to make it larger. You go through the loop, bring the loop down, and then you can pull on the ends. And there you go. There's your first cow's hitch. For the right, we're gonna take the right cord. You're gonna make a loop in that right cord and you're gonna go from front to back through that square ring again. So just go front to back through it and then pull the cord all the way through. Next, you're gonna take your right cord and you're gonna go right through the middle. You have the two, I call them elongated cords. You're gonna go right through those elongated cords that are going up and down that are attached to the adapter. So it's right in the middle. You're gonna pull that cord through. And now what you're gonna do is, it gets a little tricky sometimes. Um, you're gonna take your right, your cord that you went through the middle. You're gonna go over the cord that is right on the right side, like that. Then you're gonna drag it out and make a loop. You're gonna go from back to front through the um, square ring. Keep your finger on your right side of your work because you are gonna be making another loop and it does help to keep your finger there. So back to front. And you're gonna pull it all the way through. Once you have it all the way through, take your finger out of that loop and you're gonna go down that loop. So I'm gonna make it a little bit larger. I'm gonna loop up my cord and just push it down and then pull it through. And there's your next cow's hitch. And now we will put it on the jig. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take the top part where your buckle is and you're gonna just slip that square ring over that tongue on your jig. If you have the board with the nails, it's gonna go over the nails. And then this side is gonna go over the tongue as well, but it's on the bottom side, just like that. And I'm going to measure out everything last. Now, if you have the board with the nails and um, your nails are way far apart, you can wrap cord around your square ring and then wrap it around that nail to make it nice and tight. But always check your measurements. It's really important to check your measurements. Um, I'm gonna check my measurements after I feed all of my cords through the double cow hitch at the top because I tend to shuffle things around a little bit. Now that we have our double cow hitch complete and we have it the adapter hooked up to the jig, we can start adding the other cords. The first cord that I'm gonna add is going to be the polar blue. And what I wanna do here is I'm just gonna go in between these two cow's hitches. So I wanna go straight in the middle of one cow's hitch, then go through the second cow's hitch, bring this to the other side. And what I'll do is I'll bring the middle of the polar blue to the top of my work.
The next chord that I want to add is my micro chord, and I am choosing black instead of the white this time. I just think that the white was going to show so brightly against these darker colors, and the black might blend in a little bit so you don't see it as much. So what I want to do with this particular chord is I want to go in between my first cow's hitch right in the center. I'm going to go underneath the first stitch, underneath the second stitch, and come out the second cow's hitch right in the middle. So I'm really going under these two middle stitches with my micro cord. So I'm just going to go in between and then in between again and you can see that I am in between those two middle or underneath those two middle stitches and I will bring the middle to the top of my work as well. Midnight blue cord and what I want to do here is I want to find the middle of this cord so again I'll put the two ends together pull them through my fingers until I get to the end there's my loop right at the end so this is the middle of my cord. What I want to do with this cord is I'm going to go down through my square ring. I'm going to go right down that square ring, feed that loop through, and now I want to come up. I'm going to go underneath this top cords and I'm going to go come up right up the middle. I'm coming right up the middle of my work. Pull that loop down a little bit. Take these two ends and push them down through that loop and then pull it. You've made a third cow's hitch in between the two that you already had. Next we have our silver or our sparkling silver and our charcoal gray and what we're going to do is we're going to melt the ends and fuse them together so we can make one long piece. So you just want to melt the ends lightly. I am using a torch lighter. And then you will melt, stick them together. And then you're going to hold them there until they harden. Okay. So for this cord, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my gray side. And what I want to do here is I want to go just underneath you, the middle cow's hitch, that third one that we just made. I'm going to go underneath that cow's hitch with my gray cord and pull this cord to the middle, which is that fused area. And then after that, we can work on tightening everything up, checking your measurements to make sure that nothing moved around. For me, it, I, I like to tighten it up at the end because it's a little bit easier. Okay, once you have it nice and tight, you have all of your cords at the middle, at the top of your work. Double check your measurements just to make sure and we can get started. You can also roll up some of your ends. I rolled up my, my polar blue ends and my midnight blue that is the cord that I first worked making the double cow's hitch with, I rolled up the ends of those cores as well. All the other cores I have loose. I think it'll be a little bit easier to work with them when they're loose. So I'm going to be starting off on my right side and I'm going to take my midnight blue that I have coming out of the double cow's hitch. And what I want to do is I basically just want to go straight down the middle and then over to the left with it. So I'm going to be going over this first cord on my right and then underneath the second cord on my left. So I'm going to go straight down the middle and then over. Next I want to take the midnight blue coming out of the double cow's hitch and I want to take that cord and take it underneath the cord that I just worked 
and then I what I want to do is go straight down the middle again and then over towards the right but I want to go above the cord that I just worked so I want to go in the middle but I want to go above it like that then I'm going to come out this loop area like that next thing I'm going to do is I want to take my two micro cords and I just want to bring them down so they're on top of the cords that I just worked. Now I'm going to take my polar blue and what I want to do with my polar blue on my right is I'm going to go underneath all of my work right up the middle and then I'm going to go down this loop but I'm going to go over my micro cord and go down the loop. So go underneath, right up the middle, underneath your two horizontal midnight cords. So you're on the bottom of those. And then you want to go over and down your loop. So you're going to go over your work here and your micro cord and go down the loop. Next, you're going to take the polar blue on the left. You're going to go again underneath, right up the middle, and then over, and you're going to go over your micro cord and then down this loop. So go underneath, right up the middle, and then you're going to go over towards the left, down the loop, but remember to go on over that micro cord. Next, you're going to take your midnight blue that you made the third double cow's hitch with. You're going to take your midnight blue on the right that's hooked up to your third double cow's hitch. You're going to go over those two horizontal cords and you're going to come up and you'll be on the left side of your working cord. So go over and around, come up. You are on the left side of your working cord and you're going to pull that up. Next, you're going to take your other midnight blue and you're going to go around those two horizontal pieces again. You're going to come up and you'll be on the left side of your working cord. So go around, come up the left side, and pull it through. Now you're going to take your silver and your gray cord. And you're going to take your silver. It's the sparkling silver. I'm going to end up calling it silver the whole time. So it is the sparkle, sparkling silver cord. So you're going to take this cord and you're going to go around those two horizontal pieces but instead of coming up the left side of your cord you're going to now do the opposite of what you did with the midnight blue and you're going to come up the right side. So you're going to go over and around, come up the right side of your working cord, pull it through, do the same with the charcoal now. You're going to go over and around and come up the right. So over, around, come up the right and pull it through. And now I'm going to put on my beads for my micro cord and I'm just going to put one on each side. And once you have your beads on, what you're going to want to do is push them to the top. And once you get them in that general area, you can start to tighten up all of your work. I do suggest when you're pulling on your cords to pull on the same colors on both sides to make it an even pull.
All right, now that I've gotten that nice and tight, I'm going to start the next weave. So I'm gonna get these pieces out of the way. And I want to start with my midnight blue that I have rolled up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bundle on the right side and I want to just go down that center and then go over to the left. So you're going to go over that first cord, down the middle, underneath the second cord, and out the left. So down the middle and out. Next, I'm going to take the one on the So I'm going to be starting off on my right side again. I'm going to take the smaller bundle and what I want to do is I want to go down the middle again and then over to the left. So I'm going to go underneath, sorry, I'm going to go over this first cord, straight down the middle, underneath the second cord, and out my left. Let's go straight down, out the left. Next I'm going to take the, the other midnight blue on my left side. And I want to take that cord underneath the cord that I just worked. And I'm going to go down the middle again and over to the right. But I want to go above the cord that I just worked. So I'm going to go down the center but above that cord and then come out this loop. So down the center over to the right, out that loop. And now I'm going to take my micro cords on both sides and just bring them down. If you want, you can string on your bead now and I'm gonna do that this time because maybe it'll be a little bit easier I don't know they float on the micro cord so it might float down I'll give it a try so I'm gonna put one bead on each side again Okay, and then I'm just going to lay those on top, straight down. Now I'm going to take my polar blue and I want to go underneath all my work, right up the middle. I'm going to come over the micro cord and go down this loop. Just take the one on the right, go underneath, right up the middle, and then over the micro cord, down the loop, out the right. Next, take the one on the left, go underneath, right up the middle, go over the micro cord, and down the loop on the left. So go underneath, right up the middle, and then down this loop. Make sure you're over that micro cord. Now we're gonna take the midnight blue in the middle. And before we went around the two horizontal pieces and came up the left side, now we're going to switch it and we're going to be coming up the right side. So take your one on your right side. You're going to go over those two horizontal pieces, around them, and then you're going to come up the right side. Take the one on the left now. Go around those two horizontal pieces and come up 
the right side. And that bead floated all the way down. That's what I thought would happen. Okay. Ugh. Okay. So now we'll take the, the um, silver and the gray. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the right of the two cords that you just worked. Come to the right. And now we're gonna take the gray, go over and around, and we're gonna come up the left side. So we're gonna be doing the opposite of what we did before on the first weave and the opposite of what you just did on the two midnight blue cords. So we're gonna go with the gray and the silver. We'll be doing the same weave. So we're gonna take the silver on the right, we're gonna go over and around, but we're gonna come up the left side of our work or our working cord that is. Whoops. Sorry about that shake. Next we're going to take the gray and we're going to go over and around and we're going to come up the left side of the gray cord. Over and around. Now we're on the left side. Pull that up. If your beads fell down like they did for me, well, one fell down, the other one stayed up, you're going to want to push them up. You're going to want to tighten everything up now. Again, pull on the same color cords. It does help. So for this top weave, you can see it does look a little weird and that's just because it was the starting one and it was coming out of the third double cow's hitch the way it laid. You can play around with it to get it to be more closer if you have that issue. And once we have it nice and tight again, what we're gonna do is just start from the beginning again. So I'm gonna take these four cores that are in the middle, kind of get them out of the way for the moment. And we are gonna start from the very beginning. So I'm gonna take my midnight blue that is on my right side and again, you're gonna go right down the middle over to the left. So take the one on the right, you're gonna go down the middle and over to the left. Next, you're gonna take your midnight blue on your left side, you're gonna take it underneath the cord that you just worked. And what you wanna do here is you're gonna go down the middle and then over to the right but you wanna go above the cord that you just worked. So you wanna go above that cord and then you're gonna come out this loop. Just like that. Now you're gonna take your black, mic sorry, you're gonna take your micro cord and you're gonna pull those down. And again, you wanna add your beads on now? You can. I'm just gonna add them at the end of each weave before I tighten up because that one just on my left kept on falling down on me. So you, but you definitely want to make sure that they are laying on top of the cords that you just worked straight down. Next, you're going to take your polar blue on your right side and you want to go underneath all your work, right up the middle, over the micro cord, down the loop. So you want to go right up the middle over that micro cord, down the loop. Take the one on the left, you're gonna go underneath, right up the middle, over the micro cord, down the loop. Underneath, right up the middle, over the micro cord, down the loop. 
Now we're gonna take the two blue, or the midnight blue pieces that are in the middle. And now we're gonna do the opposite of the weave that we just did. So we came out the right side of our cord. Now we're gonna come out the left side. So take the one on the right, you're gonna go around those two horizontal pieces, and then you're gonna be on the left side of your cord when you come up. Pull it through. Take the one on the left now. You're gonna go around those two horizontal pieces, come up the left side of your cord, pull it through. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our silver and our gray, and what we wanna do here is we want to um, go around those two horizontal pieces again, but we're gonna do the opposite of what we did on our last weave and the opposite of what we did with our two midnight blue cords that we just worked. So we're going to actually go around those two horizontal pieces and we're going to come out the right. Let's go over and around and then come out the right. Take your gray and you're going to go over and around and again come out the right. Over and around, come out the right. And now you can put on your two beads on each cord, push them to the top, and then you can tighten up your work. After you've tightened it up, we can start the next weave. And I'm gonna move these four top cords out of the way. We're gonna start with our midnight blue. On our right side and what we're going to do is we're just going to go down the middle and then over to the left. Next you're going to take your midnight blue on your left side and you're going to go underneath the cord that you just worked. We're going to go down the middle but we're going to go above the cord that we just worked and then out the right side. So go down the middle and out the right side through that loop on the right. Next, you're gonna take your micro cord. You're going to just make sure that it is laying on top of the cords that you just worked on the sides. And now we're gonna take our polar blue on the right. We're gonna go underneath our work, right up the middle, then we're gonna go over the micro cord down this loop that we just made on the right. Take the one on the left. You're gonna go underneath right up the middle and then down this loop right here on your left, but you wanna go over that micro cord. So next we're gonna take our midnight blue that is in the middle of our work and what we're going to do is the opposite of what we did on the last weave so we're going to go instead of going to the left we're going to go to the right so take your right cord of midnight blue you're gonna go over those two horizontal pieces, up, and go to the right. Take the cord on the left now, go over those two horizontal pieces, around, and go to the right. Now we're gonna take the sparkling silver and the gray cords, and we're gonna go over to the right side of the two cords that we just worked. So I'm gonna cross over and then we're going to do the opposite of what we did up top. So we're gonna 
instead of going to the right, we're going to go to the left. So take your sparkling silver on the right, go over those two horizontal pieces, come up and go to the left and pull it up. Take your charcoal gray now, go over those two horizontal pieces and come up towards the left. And then you want to put on, if you haven't yet, your beads, push them to the top and then tighten your work up. All right, I got my beads up, so now I'm just gonna tighten everything up. Okay, so I went two weaves more down so you can see a bigger portion done. And I'm just gonna continue this same weave all the way down the collar until I get to the end and I will show you guys how I take it off the jig and how to do the tie off. When you are doing this weave, remember that whatever you did on the previous weave with the middle cords, which are the two Midnight blue and the charcoal gray and the sparkling silver. You're always going to be doing the opposite of what you did previously. And you're always going to do the opposite of the midnight blue and the silver and gray cord. Okay, so I am at the end of my collar and I'm going to take it off the jig now and we are going to weave in the top cords. Okay, so the way I'm going to be weaving in my cords is I'm going to start with my midnight blue that is all the way to my right. And you have a gap between your work down here and your double cow's hitch up on the square ring. You have this gap right here. What you're going to do is you're going to take your midnight blue on your right side and you're going to stick it in that gap. You're also going to take your micro cord and do the same. You want to go to the left now and take your midnight blue that's all the way to the left and your micro cord that's all the way to the left and you're going to stick it through that gap as well. Now that you got those four through, what we're gonna do is 
We want to keep this pattern, this pretty pattern that we got going all the way down the collar, we want to try and keep that to the end of the collar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two midnight blue cords and the one that is all the way to the left, I'm going to put it down through that gap. And then I want to take my other midnight blue cord and this is where I'm going to actually use my pericord needle because this hole can be stubborn at times if if you don't have one like I said you can work it through and I gotta cut that off so when you're gonna use your pericord needle you want to melt the top a little bit just so you can stick it in that hole and screw it on. So you have this hole right here, right in between the two cow stitches, and you're gonna go down that hole with the midnight blue that was all the way to the right. And now we can work on the silver and the gray cord. So what you're gonna do with the silver cord is I'm gonna actually use my needle again. You wanna find that gap and it's getting kind of cluttered in there now. You want to find that gap in between your work and the cow's hitch and you're going to go down that gap with the gray. And it's going to cross over those blues to keep this pattern going. And then you'll take the silver. You're going to take the sparkling silver now and what you want to do here is you want to go in that middle hole in between the two cow's hitches but you want to go to the right of your midnight blue cord that you stuck through there. So you want to just cross over and be on the right. And then you can tighten everything up. So once you have it nice and tight and everything is where you want it to be. Let's see if I can get this guy over a little bit. So I'm going to start on my side and I'm going to take the polar blue, I'm going to cut about a half an inch up from the collar, I'm going to melt it and then I'm going to squish it down. Now this is where you can use a butter knife to squish it down or if you have a knotter's tool you can also use the end of your knotter's tool to just roll it down which I do like. So I'm going to melt it and you want to get it hot. Be very careful. It catches on fire more than, at least more than I would like it to. And now I'm going to just squish that down and you just want to hold it for a few seconds. I'll do the other side now. The same way. So about half an inch up or so. I like to fray it out. And then I'm just going to squish it down. And now we can start on the middle cores. So for the middle cores, I'm going to start with my midnight blue that's all the way on the end. Now a lot of people will cut and melt this midnight blue that we put through that's on the side. They'll cut it and melt it on the top, 
but I don't I don't really like it when it's cut right there so that's why I stick mine through it for this particular collar the melted part is gonna show where on other collars it will be more on the side because the cord was coming up through the front of the collar that's where the um, melted part would be and it would be seen. I think it just looks a little bit neater if you do it this way. Also, some people like to weave in some of these ends back here. I do not do that because I use the Gorilla Glue. So I'm just gonna cut this about the same length Uh, I think it's a little bit longer than that, to be honest. And I'm actually going to do the micro cord with it. And I'm going to cut the micro cord to be the same length. The micro cord does melt faster, so be careful of that. And I'm going to melt it. If you catch it on fire, you can just blow it out, press that down, I'm going to do the same on this side, I'm just going to cut both cords at the same time this time. Melt it, and then squish it down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down the line and I'll do the gray, then the midnight blue, then the other gray, then the other midnight blue. I'm going to cut them all the same length, but I'm just going to cut them one at a time because then you can actually hold these out of the way when you're melting so you don't catch other cords on fire or melt them. Alright, once you're at this point, if you want, you can use your collar as is. But like I said, I like to put on some Gorilla Glue on the ends that I melted just for some added security. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to put, them, put it on um, just this melted area. You don't need a whole bunch. A little bit goes a very long way. And I'm just gonna put a couple of dabs on and then I'll rub it around with my finger and let it dry. It takes a couple of hours to dry. Sometimes it takes half the day sometimes here, but it, um, like I said, I've never had anything that I know of fall apart. No one's ever said anything. So I, I just went around that whole entire area and I'll let this dry and then when it's done I'll show you guys what the finished result looks like. 